and welcome back to Caesar Man Warrior. This is another patron roster review, and this will be unique, very unique. This is N.W. Robinson from Bad GN, and he has done his own roster review. He is hyper focused, like I suggest. He does spend a little bit of money in the game, and he's been playing for a little while, but he's done his roster review, and he's got a ton of questions. Um, he sent me over a uh, essay essentially <laughs> with everything he wanted to do and everything he's doing and all of his focus and everything and so I'm going to try to answer he asked a ton of questions I got like the top 10 questions and kind of what his direction is and what he needs from me um, so very first he said um, you know he's kind of worked on all of the mods all the different mod challenges and he's kind of hung up on whether critical uh, damage mods from the Jawas are really that important should he focus on them uh, because he's done pretty much everything else that in you know matters to him and this is why he's asking because he's so focused he's got a top like 18 characters right now he's working on does he really want to work on jawas in addition to that i will say that it is not absolutely imperative at this moment in time that you drop everything else you're doing for them but yes they will become a priority you will want that to get them at least um gear eight ish approximately and you want to get them five star you want to be able to do that because critical damage mods think about this every character in the game that's a classified as an attacker and b does physical damage you will want critical damage mod set on them well attackers there's about you know 45 or so that do physical damage so you're looking at 45 characters almost a third uh, of the characters in the game that need a critical damage set so this could be arguably one of the most important sets in the game so there's your answer to that um, side note you did mention that swgoh.gg is not syncing right because of the time differential and that's because they don't recognize the um the time changes that occur in the spring and fall so all you have to do to fix that is go into swgoh.gg and if it's syncing an hour late pick a time that's an hour earlier than your time and it will start to sync correctly i had the same issue uh caught it this month it realized that it was showing me like third place and fifth place and i've never been nothing but first so i was like i don't know what's going on <laughs> figured it out it was because of the time change a few months back so that's that as far as arena changes, you uh, show here that you've got a Rex lead, uh, Darth Nihilus, uh, Chirrut and Baze, and of course General Kenobi. This is kind of your classic triple cleanse team. And then you also have an alternate team that's a little bit more high damage, uh, higher DPS team, which is a wedge lead, Biggs, Chirrut, Baze, and General Kenobi. Same basic team, except for you're taking out Rex and Darth Nihilus for the, the Wigs combo. And you're asking, is there anything else you can do in that kind of thing? Uh, really, this is going to be your more defensible team, and your higher DPS is the one you've picked. Out of the characters that you currently have, there's just not a ton that you can do because of the development and where you're at with what you have. You've developed some of the best characters in the game and made a couple of the best teams you can make in the game. Unfortunately, to create four or five, six different you know synergistic teams, it's really hard, especially looking at where we're at if you look down your roster. So, uh, unfortunately, for your arena changes potentially I would say really what you're doing is what's going to need to be done for now and you're so focused on some uh, some developments that over time in playing you will get those additional teams just naturally through what you are doing which is your hyper focus on stuff as far as ships and, and fleet arena you kind of asked uh, just one basic question like should you keep farming these ships should you keep worrying about these ships and um to answer that question uh, I, and I know why, because you're wondering, should I just, you know, now that I can farm Zetas, should I just use my currency for Zetas? So this is what I do, and you're asking for my opinion. I keep, I collect currency. I try to keep around 5,000 currency as best as possible. Normally, I can't keep it over three. I spend it too fast, but I try to keep a little bit of excess currency um, in every store. Actually, every other store, my excess is 25K. And the reason for that is if they drop a character into a store, it takes approximately 25,000 of that currency to get that character from a three star where they give them to you all the way up to a seven star. So because of that, I keep 25K, but ships, you know, it's impossible to keep that much. Um, so I personally say you should continue to develop your teams. Now, do you want to develop every single ship in the game? Probably not. I do that, but you don't have to. Um, so for you, I would still continue to focus on some of the most important ships in the game. Scimitar, 
Biston's U-Wing, Slave 1, TIE Advanced. By the way, why I say Biston's U-Wing, you're developing Bistan. That's, he's one of your favorites, so that's a reason why he would be uh, a ship you would use. And he's great for stealthing and speeding up a team and target lock. So um, definitely some of these key ships I would continue to farm. Um, it's not going to be a make or break in your arena. You're not going to, you know, from 4-star to 7-star become so overpowered that people can't beat you. That's not the way it works, unfortunately. So, you, but you do, I would say you do want to continue to develop those ships um, just to make them a little more durable and a little easier for you on offense to be able to tear through teams and get higher up in the chain. Uh, and so that's I was, my thought is just to farm. But you also know that when you're farming these ships, uh, a lot of times they don't drop for a while. So if you have, you know, 3,000 or more of the currency and you notice that your ships haven't dropped and you're about to get another ship payout, go ahead and use some of that currency for a Zeta. Um, that's what I'm currently doing. I'm farming four ships currently. I'm farming the TIE Advance, both of the Phantom 2 and Ghost, which are the new Rebel ships, and then I'm also farming the brand new Gauntlet Starfighter, which is down here. So I've got, you know, four ships that I'm trying to develop, and um, it's difficult, obviously, to farm four ships that are in four separate locations because they can drop all at once, and you have 1,600 currency you need to get them all, or you're not going to get them. So I would recommend continuing to farm, but just be hyper-focused on which particular ships kind of balance it out and split them between the two as far as ships go you look like you're doing good you're using admiral akbar um, you're using Biggs' ship obviously um, you're using the tie advanced um, and so that's good i would recommend a slight shift um, you have it looks like possibly bistan's ship in there um, i would switch out slave one and wedge for the Imperial TIE Fighter and Umbaran. And the reason for that is the Umbaran's more durable, he can dispel on basic, um, and the Imperial TIE Fighter will almost assuredly go first and allow for your bigs to taunt, which will allow for you to protect your other ships. Also, it gives the freedom for you to have Scimitar in the backup and Slave 1 in the backup, so Scimitar can come in and help further protect your team, and then Slave 1 can come in with his mass AoE and do some massive damage. Wedge, who's in your primary lineup, I'd throw him in the last slot of your backup, that's just my two cents. I know you didn't ask for how to play fleet, but that's what I thought when I looked at your team. As far as the next question, you asked about gearing teams. So you said you, when you're working on a team, for example, you're currently working on resistance. You said, should you like focus on like Finn and just blast him up to gear 11 and then come to Ray? And, and I would say, you know, and then work one at a time or do them all like gear eight, then to gear nine, then to gear 10. My personal preference is to do them all as a team. It's all or nothing. And this is why it needs to be balanced. If you have one character who's overpowered, but all the rest are not, they're going to die very quickly and your team will fall apart. This is a piece of a puzzle. And every one of these characters is going to play an integral role in the success or the failure of that team and if you have ray die right away you're not going to get the dps you were looking for or if you have poe die right away you lose that fin poe combo so my suggestion is yes while the team is not going to do much right now because you're a lower level gear and you're doing heroic gear them together and slowly over time as you learn the team as you learn the characters abilities and as they get stronger you will continue to see your scores climb higher and higher all right, the next thing you asked about was Omegas and Zetas. And, and for Omegas, you didn't want me to think about resistance. You're going to worry about those later, but you wanted to know the non-resistance characters. Which ones are you missing? And I went through all of your favorites, which you can kind of see most of them here in this top section. And um, you're missing 110 Omega pieces. Uh, for all of the for all of the abilities that you really should Omega on these characters, I'm talking about Darth Nihilus, um, Baze, Lando, Jyn Erso, Rex, Tebow, uh, Princess Leia, Biggs, Bistan, Akbar. You got all those characters in your favorites that you don't have all of their Omegas. So 110 Omegas is ridiculous. It's really hard to tell somebody, hey, just grab 110 Omegas and you'll be fine. So I I tried to do my best, and basically we're going to go through and I picked the top half or the top 55. And you should be able to knock all of these out in the next 30 days. That was my goal, create a 30 day goal for you. Um, so we're gonna go through the characters and which ones of these characters I recommend you do out of the top half. Number one is going to be Darth Nihilus and his Annihilate. And the reason why you want to Omega this is because until it's Omega, 
people can come back from the dead. And that means that your old DACAs, even though mo most people don't use them, or the Jen Ursos, or now Ewok Elder, who is very popular and coming back uh, you know, into this with the whole Ewok rework, um, they're gonna potentially come back. Same thing with Boba Fett. If people are using him and he's very popular still, they're gonna come back to life. And you want this Annihilate to be a finito. A finish you know you want it to be the last thing that happens so definitely he's going to be in your top half of them for bays I didn't include any of them so let's go to him the top three you do not have done um, however you use bays in arena and all three of these you get an extra 15% damage except for fierce reprisal you get 30% extra damage. I personally at some point would do all of these because he's in your arena team and you want, even though he's a tank, you want him to do as much damage as possible. He's one of the highest damage dealing tanks in the game. And so that's an advantage when using him in arena. And so to not take advantage of that uh, and, and add additional damage to an already high damage dealing tank is kind of silly, but you're spread thin with Omegas, I get it. That's why you have it. And so you're, you're being wise and trying to decide, but these are not included in this top half, okay? This is gonna be maybe month two, but not the first month. Let's go ahead and go to the next character, Lando. And the only one on here is Gambler Shot, and it's just some extra damage, so I say skip it for now. And then for Jyn Erso, it's the top two that you don't have. I'm gonna pick one of them. The top one is just extra damage. The second one, Rebel Counterattack. Um, I would highly recommend uh, doing the rebel counterattack, and the reason is it adds giving them advantage for a couple of turns, which means they get guaranteed crits for a couple of turns. It just creates a strong team and makes them even stronger. It also makes her very synergistic with first order and all of the first order abilities. Not that you're using first order now, but there just think about that the cross symmetry that you can get from one character to another, and this definitely opens up a window that you don't necessarily have without it. But the advantage is just nice, and if you're good going to use her for Rancor, putting that advantage up on other people means they're going to do guaranteed crits. You could do that to Darth Vader and make sure his calling blade guaranteed does a, a crit, which is really awesome. So definitely I would do rebel counterattack. So I've got Annihilate and Jin's rebel counterattack. Now let's move to Rex. All right, so the top three are not done. Um, I would do the basic, the impeding shot. It takes it from like a 75% chance of removing turn meter to a 100% chance of removing turn meter. And so, uh, you know, removing that turn meter just becomes a thing on his basic. I would definitely get that one done. And then I would also do squad uh, discipline. Squad discipline is important. It um, gives you an extra round of tenacity. Instead of two rounds, you get three rounds of tenacity up, even though it'll at some point be dispelled. Um, if it doesn't get dispelled, it's, it's really crazy to have tenacity up for three turns and that extra round of tenacity up is a big deal now the subdue it's just an extra five percent damage um, it's not the biggest deal so if you're going to skip something i would skip that so i would do impeding shot and squad discipline for Tebow, you have the middle two. I'd actually recommend doing both, the, scr the scramble tactics and bring low. Um, definitely both of them are gonna help him. If you're using him in Rancor especially, um, uh, you know, he's got the additional call to us, you know, the 30% more turn meter and the more turn meter removal and stuff. So make sure that you're using both of these if you're going to use him in raids now if you're not using Tebow anywhere um, I'm not sure why he'd be so developed so I'm guessing you are uh, but I would definitely finish him off and get these two knocked out as far as Leia the you have three of them that are not developed and um, I would definitely say that the one that's an absolute must is Rebel Tactics she can put herself into stealth with Rebel Tactics and you can keep her in a perpetual state of stealth if you Omega the Rebel Tactics hair triggers an extra bit of damage which is good if you're going to use her in raids at some point uh, and the leadership ability only if you would ever use her as a leader which I don't know a human who does so I wouldn't worry about that but Rebel Tactics is the one with Leia I would definitely recommend. All right, with Biggs, uh, I'm going to recommend one of them. You've got the Adrenaline Rush and the Cadet's Aim. The Adrenaline Rush gives you an extra turn of evasion, and it goes from three to four, and really, I mean, it's not the end of the world. It can constantly trigger, so the extra round isn't the end of the world. But Cadet's Aim, think about it. He's your attacker, and it does 15% more damage. It goes from being really good to great, so it's one of those things, if you have an attacker, the extra damage is basically the best part of it um, that would be one of the best so I would I would do cadets aim for sure and that would be the one in bigs that I would suggest 
Now you are developing Bistan, I know, probably for the Rancor Raid and some other areas of the game, plus he's got a ship and I recommend that. Your top three are not done, but of the top three, Blastem just does extra damage. Um, I know he's an attacker, but the two most important in here is Frenzy. It gives you an extra turn of Frenzy and you need that. Uh, it's just because it doesn't last as long as the cooldown, so you need to get it to work as long as possible. And so you want to make sure that you do that. And then the last is Gunner's Tactics. That's his turn meter removal capability and it increases or decreases cooldown so it allows for you to use it more often by another turn an extra turn um so it goes from you know four to three and you want to use that every third turn so gunner's tactics would be the number one most important and then i would do frenzy so you you can have frenzy last as long as possible now the last is Akbar, and you have the top three that are not done. Now I said I would stick with 55 Omegas out of the 110 Omegas you needed, and I'm at 50, so I'm only gonna give you one out of Admiral Akbar to do, but think about this, he's your capital ship, so you eventually wanna do all three of these to make your capital ship maxed out uh, as far as power goes. But for the number one that I would do on here is Tactical Genius, it's going to, uh, reduce the cooldown and that's important the, the more you use it the more effective it is so I would definitely do tactical genius but at some point I would do the other two because um, they are those abilities so basically you can get 55 omegas a month approximately if you do everything uh, and you have, you're at level 85 and you get the one a day plus you do the other weekend omega events and you're doing the refreshes on those uh, and then if you do this your first month get everyone i recommended and then next month you can finish off the rest of them and then you can go to your resistance or you can ignore the second half and just go straight to resistance for a Zeta ability, you said for everybody you have, you don't know of anyone you really want a Zeta right now, and so should you hold it, or is there someone you are overlooking? There's only two choices. It's either hoard them, which is never a bad idea, or Darth Nihilus, Wound in the Force. It's an excellent Zeta. It works very, very effectively. So if you were looking for a Zeta and you aren't using Darth Nihilus in Arena, it's not a bad idea to Zeta his unique. Even though it may proc the Rex leads up on the opposing way it does more detriment to the team than it does good even if it does proc plus if it procs it gives you the opportunity to cleanse that off and then they can't do it for another few turns so just a thought um maybe darth nihilus but if you're not super excited about you know health down on everybody when they take their turn as a thing or you're just afraid of it proccing the rex lead then um i would go ahead and just hold on to it now to be fair, he already puts a damage over time when he takes a turn on a random individual, so almost guaranteed he's going to proc the Rex on the other side no matter what. So for people that are afraid of that, it's kind of silly because even without Omegas, he does that. Question number eight comes out of resistance. You said if you had to replace one of these characters with R2-D2, because that's your next hyper focus is getting R2-D2 the next time he comes around, who would you replace? And my question or my answer would be resistance pilot. That would be who I would put in there. Um, I would take resistance pilot out, put R2-D2 in. Um, although resistance pilot is an excellent pilot, you said you just didn't want to overdevelop characters you didn't need to develop. Um, honestly, if it was me, I would develop all six resistance to include R2-D2 and the pilot trooper and all those so um i know you don't want to do that you're trying to be hyper efficient so if you were going to kill one of these development characters i would do resistance pilot pull him out and put r2d2 in all right a couple of the last questions comes out of basically creating mega teams you said you've got you know you can do 10 to 15 million with all of the teams that you have for heroic aat once developed and you want to know after resistance should you be worried about another mega team first off um, you are hyper focused and so this is a question you shouldn't even be asking yourself at this point in, in the game because you haven't even developed your resistance yet you can't get your three million out of them yet so I wouldn't even think about another mega team until you get your first mega team completed and yes your rebels are going to do a couple million and they look great but I would still recommend focusing on your on your um, resistance and getting them finished off and and even then do you really need another team? If you're putting in, you know, 10 million in, in a raid, it's unnecessary unless it's either a pride thing or you want the best gears and you're trying to get top three thing um, to put in that much damage. So just a thought, I personally wouldn't worry about having every overpowered arena, or, you know, raid team out there. And resistance is great, it works everywhere. It's a really, really good option that you chose. 
Lastly, you asked about investing money in the future. If you spend a little bit of money, what should you spend it on? You're at the point now where you're really not wanting to spend much money and you're thinking maybe if a premium tune drops, something like that. So the only thing I would do is I would, on occasion, if you were gonna spend any money is to buy crystals hoard crystals with your dailies um, that you earn and then when a specific character that you're trying to get leveled up you get to like year 9 10 or 11 and you're struggling to get that last piece or two to get them to the next round i would buy or purchase those specifically out of the store so that way you can get them past that that breaking point for example i have five characters that need a newbie and scanner i'm just sitting on five people at gear 10 they all five can't go to gear 11 until they get a newbie and scanner i don't even have a single newbie and salvage like it's not dropping in the raids for me so when a newbie and scanner drops in the store i will be buying that so i can get one of my characters from gear 10 to gear 11 but i'm hyper focused on that one piece that's all i'm worried about um, and then also if a premium character drops for example nihilus bays those two characters are worth purchasing slowly uh, for shards out of the shipments but there's very few people worth that very few characters worth that and so you said maybe you know ahsoka tano uh fulcrum Shh, maybe i i think she'll be farmable soon enough so i'm not too concerned about that but i would just worry mostly about gear so you are doing wonderfully. I know that you are hyper-focused. You sent over the most notes I've ever seen in my life. A bit overwhelming, but I am glad for the challenge. It was exciting. Um, so we're only doing a couple of these uh, a week as far as roster reviews. And so it took a lot of time, but I hope that I've guided you in what you've already figured out for yourself and helped make some decisions easier for you as you move forward. As always, Leave your comments for them below as to what you think I got right and maybe what things you think I should have suggested. And keep your gaming on. Warrior, out.